What can we learn from the best wingers out there? Today we have an analysis of wingers to help you develop your game. Wingers have many different functions and roles, but they have a huge importance to the team, no matter what that role is. And as you see this video going by, you can see the different positions and roles that wingers have. Some of them prefer to cut inside, some prefer to go on the outside, but it's all about being multifunctional. The top modern wingers are able to do a majority of different roles. And over the years, the output of wingers has increased and increased. It's no longer a position that is seen as more of a creator. They now need to have end product in the final third and score more goals. If we take a look at the Premier League's top 10 scorers last season, five of them were wingers. And these wide forwards or wingers are crucial to Premier League teams in their attacking. So it's vital that they have their strikers and wingers firing. And if they're firing on all cylinders, they're a real threat. Going back to the 1920 season, Manchester United's Marcus Rashford was a thriving wide man, cutting inside onto his favoured foot, but now Rashford is struggling, lacking in confidence and form. But have defenders worked out that Rashford might be one-dimensional, too predictable? And for Rashford to be one of the very best out there, does Rashford need to add more to his game to become better? And the top, top wingers do have that little bit more. They have more variation. They're able to do different things. An example of a player that does have this variation is City's Riyad Mahrez. He brings unpredictability to his play by going on the inside and outside of the defender. So for any winger, it's really important that you should be able to make sure you can strike on both feet. Your left and your right foot are equally important when you're playing out in those wide areas. Can you go on the outside of a defender and go and shoot on maybe your right foot or cut inside onto your left foot? Having this is really important, and it works. Son last season scored 11 goals on both feet, so we need to add that to our game. But shooting with both feet isn't the only thing we need to work on. Having confidence on the ball is huge, and dribbling is a big part of being a winger. This is something that Rashford has struggled with recently. He only cuts into one side, and he's become unpredictable. But you want to build your confidence on the ball by taking more touches in your training. And you can do this just with some simple dribbling drills, in and out of cones such as the figure of eight here, or quick twisting and turning drills that help you turn on the outside of your boot while keeping the ball close to your feet. The more that you can practice this, the more comfortable you're going to be in situations where you're moving forwards with the ball at the defenders. We gotta make sure though that we practice on both feet. Again, we wanna have that variation in our game. Can you do the dribbles on the right foot and the left side? Can you cut inside and can you go outside of the defender? Don't be one dimensional and do the same thing over and over again. If you do, defenders know what's going to happen and you're easier to play against. Defenders hate attackers that are unpredictable and have lots of skills in their locker. So we want this close control and it's vital to dribblers but one of the most important things when dribbling is being able to develop skills so that we can change direction quickly. These skills and change the direction just add more to your locker, your tool bag of skills. But the key is being able to drop the shoulder and Messi obviously is the very best at it that I've ever seen. And a good way of practicing this is just through some ball mastery drills. Yes, we're adding in a skill with the step over, but the focus here is to drop the shoulder and make sure that you're bending your knees and accelerating away or having a change of pace when you change that direction. Practice this more and you're really going to start seeing improvements on being able to drop the shoulder on both sides of your body so that you can go to the left and the right of the defenders. And this ability on the ball is absolutely crucial and something all these top wingers have. They can play these different roles because they're great when they receive it. And to do all of that, they need a quality first touch. And any player can work on this by using a ball and a wall. You can do different types of touches with different parts of your feet, pass with different feet, and use a different angle and spin on the ball when you're receiving it. But the key to this is practicing so regularly that you get really consistent with your touch. And the top players, will rarely make mistakes in a game. It's actually really quite quite rare that you see a player miscontrol the ball a few times in a match, which if you think about, is a very hard thing to do. So make sure that we get a good first touch. These technical skills are huge, but the good first touch can help these attacking players make better decisions when they receive the ball in these wide areas. And making poor decisions in these areas can be many wide players downfall and separate some of the best from the rest.
So if you were to get the ball and always receive it and dribble straight away, putting your head down, the defender's going to know what's going to happen next. But if you were to then receive the ball and cross all of the time, the defender's going to then step in and pressure you a lot more tightly to prevent that ball from getting into the box. So the key is to bring variation. And to do that, you need to have a good first touch. It might be now that you've crossed a few times in a row and the defender pressures you hard, but you've now got space to go in behind and attack. So taking a good first touch can give you time and space to assess those decisions, allowing you to bring more variation to your game. And this is what these top players do. They're really aware of the variation. So the technical is key, but not everything is about technical as a wide player. Pressuring defence in the final third closer to their goal is a really, really important part of an attacking wide player's game. But being good off the ball isn't just about the defensive side of the game. Top movement off the ball can transform an attacker's game and give lots more opportunities to that wide player, allowing them to add more goals to their game. If you drop short all the time, it's only going to invite pressure. So again, we're looking at that variation. The defence of the other team are encouraged by you dropping short. They squeeze up the pitch and pressure higher. But variation is now key. Movement in behind as they step higher up the pitch into that space can get that wide player through on goal. And this is where lots of opportunities come. So always make sure to be looking at making runs in behind. Do it every single time and the defence will drop off. Now and again, if you drop short to the ball, you're then going to have that time and space. So movement off the ball is vital. And the best players out there realise how important this movement toward the goal is. Get into the penalty area more and you're going to be having more chances. And putting this hard work in off the ball gets the winger into better positions to show what they can do with the ball, which then allows them to hit the high numbers in front of goal. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope that helped you become a better winger and learn more about the position.